Hi, Mayor. Good morning, Joe. How are you this morning? Doing well. Beautiful morning. Indeed. Yeah, it's, it's hard to believe it's the dog days of August. Feels great, like September. I know. I know. Time is... Uh... Always seems to fly by the summertime. <laughs> One cue uh, to me this morning was, was that the uh, the free summer meals program is coming to an end on Friday, and I said, "Oh, there's a sign." <laughs> Wait, I'm paying you enough time there. You got to go to the free meals. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I am not eligible. <laughs> Uh, but it's a great it's a great program, and I know it continues throughout the school year as well now, uh, thanks to the state stepping in. So that's great. It is big. You know, that was a big priority for uh, Speaker Mariano, the, the program that kind of um, takes away that that image. You know, that, that everyone's the same. Everyone, you know, the whole discussion about equality and equity and stuff. Well, I thought it was a good move to make sure our kids uh, have the nutrition they need for yeah. school. So it was a good. Good mate, and I know the governor is very supportive of it. But uh, my hats off to Speaker Mariano. Absolutely, uh, Mayor. Can we talk this morning a little bit about uh, the future of the current uh, MBTA bus garage on Hancock Street, uh, which will soon be the former MBTA bus garage on Hancock Street? <laughs> yes, that, I think that actually that garage actually predated the T. I think it was uh, run by whoever. The company was that had the trolley service way back when. Wow. But anyway, it's been there a long time. Yeah, and uh, it hasn't been a good neighbor over the years to the estuary in there mm. down by Black's Creek. A lot of pollution over the years, but uh, it's all been contained now. But yeah, so we uh, we expressed interest to the previous administration governor and the current administration, and certainly the general manager is aware that the city of Quincy is interested in. Uh, in receiving that property with the idea that we would build a facility that would kind of um, be a, augment the stadium, uh, perhaps an indoor turf on the same level as the field, and then uh, an upper floor which could have classrooms and gymnasiums and and serve uh, you know, after-school programs. And um, you know, we're looking with different organizations right now, nonprofits, um, but. But, you know, at the end of the day, we think we can do some programming in there that will help, um, you know, families that need it. And we are talking with a number of donors. We're trying to raise private funds to build it. Uh, Rich Mahoney is uh, is spearheading that for me. And um, there's a gentleman from, uh, graduated Quincy High, and then he graduated from Harvard, and he died in a tragic fire a couple of years out of uh, college. And... Um, the guys that went to school that want to do something in his honor. So there's a real possibility that we raise significant dollars um, and name it in his honor. Huh. And uh, then that would provide a terrific facility right next to our stadium and have minimal cost to the taxpayer. So it's uh, it's, a, it's an ambitious program, but we're, uh, we're excited about it. We think this has legs, so good stuff. Um, I know that the uh, there is a proposal to rezone that as open space so would that negate that plan that you have or? no it would not that would cement it I that see. would um, that would send a clear message to the state lawmakers and all that uh you know this is this is what we want to do as a community and and um i it, you know this would fit with the, the rezoning do you know what the timeline is for the t to move out of there I believe early 27 they're going to be moving over to Bergen Parkway with the whole operation. Okay. It looks like they're making pretty quick progress now on the... On the they're uh, moving now, yeah. yeah. They sure uh, yeah. I also noticed the um, the reconstruction of the Hannon Parkway is, has taken place, and looks like that's uh, about ready to be uh, implemented as well. Yeah, I think the final uh, lights and striping and should be done this week. So, uh, yes, that will be a nice... Addition, because if you're coming off of Berg and taking a ride on the Hannon, it all backed up because of the light was so quickly there. This way, you can take the right, and those people heading up Parking Way will have a dedicated right, uh, and uh, it should make things move more smoothly in that area. Sure. As we mentioned, getting down to the wire now for the start of uh, schools, anything that uh, parents should be aware of in terms of changes at the buildings? No, I know that every year we do upgrades and fix things and uh depending on the population shifts and sometimes there's new classrooms added in some buildings where they can find space because the population is up so 
I know that uh, Paul Hines and his team from public buildings work directly with the superintendent and his team and kind of get all this stuff done the summer in preparation. And then, of course, the regular maintenance. And I know it's because I think this would be this is the last summer of the original rug put in back in 1980. <laughs> it was pretty worn down throughout the classrooms in that building. So in the last few years, we've been doing so many classrooms a year, so that'll finish that up. But things like that throughout the city and the various buildings, you know, regular painting, plumbing upgrades, whatever the those types of projects you can't do while the kids in school. We try to bang them out during the summer when the kids aren't around. Sure, yeah. Um, Mayor, I've been asked to ask you about uh, where the process of redeveloping Wollaston Center is. Yeah, I was still working on that. I, be- I believe I got to check in with planning, but mm-hmm. I know we were awaiting the state's approval on the the new uh, URDP down there. Mm-hmm. So. It should be if we don't have it already. It was it was pending, but that was the last kind of um, piece to it, if you will, through the procedures and process by which we we started at the local level. But the state does have to sign off on those things, so uh, I got to check in on that. But we do have uh, some interest there, and we're uh, going to definitely pursue that this year. Very good. And you'll be planting a bunch of new trees, I guess. Yes, every we try to do that every year. The last several years, we've used hotel tax money toward that. Mm-hmm. Commissioner Murphy and his team, and uh, you know, we've lost a lot of trees over the decades, but we continue to plant new ones. I know in the discussion of climate control and debates and arguments about what fossil fuels are not, solar or not, wind, whatever the heck may be, one of the great things we can do is plant trees for the environment. It uh, has tremendous benefits to us. So. We're going to continue to do that aggressively. So, uh, people are interested in having a tree planted uh, on the loom border. If you have one on uh, the street, feel free to reach out to the Department of Natural Resources. Yep, there's actually a tree planting request form right on the city website. Um, and of course there is. Way ahead of, me. <laughs> of course there, and a QR code too to use on your wow. mobile device. Yes, <laughs> impressive. Uh, and uh, we're going back to the 80s and 90s this Saturday, Mayor. It's the last of the free concerts on the Hancock Adams Common. Yes, uh, it's John McDonald's been coordinating that program this year. I know we had a little weather with one or two of them, but um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great program. I've heard a lot of feedback from the public about how, first of all, how beautiful the Hancock Adams Green is, and then to, to really bring bring it to life with the various programs we've done. I know people deeply appreciate it. So, um, yes, uh, 80s and 90s. Um, I was more 70s type music, but um, there was some good music in the 80s and 90s as well. Uh, so, encourage people to enjoy it and avail themselves to it. Yeah, it's uh, 3 to 8 p.m. on Saturday. It's uh, free to the public. Yeah, bring your uh, bring your own chair if you want. There'll be some food trucks and what have you. It should be a lot of fun for sure. Absolutely. And then, uh, not to be outdone, on Sunday is the 37th annual, believe it or not, August Moon Festival. Indeed, uh, and that, that program's come a long way, too, in its history. It started up as a link, little dinky program down in Norfolk Downs, yep. uh, but certainly has grown. And I certainly tip my hat to Philip Chong and the, the board and all the volunteers that put it together and put the sponsors. They do a lot of good work in our city. Uh, Quincy Asian Resources, we're grateful for that. Absolutely. It started out, about 1,000 people showed up. I think this year they're expecting 10,000 uh, along Coddington Street on Sunday. So certainly Pretty amazing. It really good is. Yeah. And I remember the first one, so <laughs> I'm starting to feel old. <laughs> you are old, Joe. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> At least I've earned it. <laughs> yep. Appreciate your time, Mayor. Have a great day, Joe. You too. Bye-bye.